The beauty in 1.20 is real. What an amazing place. I just cannot wait to build here. Wow. Late last night, right after I published the last video, I saw a message on Discord from Brickster, uh, one of the amazing builders on the slow run SMP. He gave me these coordinates and asked me if this was the cherry grove biome that I claimed for building, because if not, he was totally going to claim it. I, at first, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. Um, I guess I'd, I'd mentioned to people that I was looking for a cherry biome to build in. Uh, and because we're all on different time zones here, I, I had some extra time. So I flew out here. And once I saw this place, I was, I was amazed. <laughs> so I wrote back to Brick. Why, yes, yes, that is the cherry grove biome that I claimed. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> oh, Brickster, I know you're going to pay me back somehow. But come on, once I saw this place... I knew it had to happen. It's a great feeling getting started on a brand new build, especially one that you're excited about. Hey, how you doing? I finished detailing the caretaker's house. It's all done. I'll give you a tour of the inside, but first I want to show you the outside. As I did with Rusty, the rusted tower, the previous episode, I built an outpost as a staging area. And this is the caretaker's house of Castle Miranda. So this will be my staging area as I build the castle. I really loved putting together this block palette here. It's so unique. And the build is based on a post on Twitter that I saw by Toadman MC. And I will put a link to that tweet in the description because you've got to check out the inspiration for this caretaker's house it comes from this tweet. And the block palette that is used in that in that build is just beautiful. I love the combination of calcite going into wool with the brown mushroom blocks, and we've got some of the darker blocks at the bottom. I was just super, as soon as I saw that tweet, I was like, wow, th this is really amazing building. And I really wanted to make something very similar to that for my caretaker's house. Now, the, the caretaker's house would be a little bit run down, you know, sort of like the theme for the my, my main base, the breadbasket inn, that I called lovingly neglected, right? Um, things that are, you know, not exactly in pristine condition. They've been worn and weathered over time, so you get these these streaks and, and marks, and, and parts have been repaired with uh, materials that don't quite belong. The original materials are long gone and you've got some weathering streaks and uh, and the, the roof pattern has eroded away, worn away over time. In any case, let, so do check out the tweet by Toadman MC, a beautiful uh, salt box style uh, house. And I've added a, 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 some section over here in the back because we needed a little bit more storage on the inside. And on the back, there's another work area uh, for, for outdoor work. We've got a cauldron and a smoker out there. 
So the caretaker, of course, lives independently and just watches over the castle. Now I'll give you a tour of the inside because um, this is where I'll actually be working. So we're going to build the castle over in this direction here. Uh, and this is where I'm going to keep all my storage and, uh, and, uh, and put together all the materials for the castle. This is our main storage area over here. Plenty of, plenty of storage. Uh, coming through here, this is sort of the kitchen slash, you know, the, the, the industrial furnace room. Uh, this is also access to my nether portal down there. Now, on the upstairs, we've got uh, uh, some decent civilized living quarters up here. Lots of, you know, these uh, trapdoor windows get mostly open air because, I mean, this is a cherry grove. It's just beautiful, like to be able to breathe in this air as much as possible, this fresh, clean mountain air. I love the view from, from this little porch area. Another uh, open window here. And as you can see on this, on the outside here, there's another, uh, what would be the same kind of window, except it's, it's closed. I, I don't actually have a window there. And on the upstairs, we do have our, our bedroom, lots of storage up here. Really small, you know, I mean, caretaker doesn't need much. We're mostly out and about at the castle tending to uh, all of the repairs and uh, anything else that's, that's you know, going on in the castle. I really love this place and I really love this cute little quaint, smallish build that gives us everything that we need to, to get set up for building the castle. Our little home away from home, the caretaker's house, here while we work on Castle Miranda. Alright. I like it. I really like this build. It's a cute little eclectic looking house. Just great. I like how the polished basalt goes into the acacia there. And really an awesome view from the window. Hey, there are some perks to being the caretaker of an awesome castle. Wow. I mean, it was fun walking through this in creative and in survival, it's even more fun. Just to be in this biome is just super amazing. I'm gonna have to put some more of the uh, pink petals around, just to scatter them around, blend in a little bit. Yeah, but this, what, this is, what a great place to start out my next build. I'm super excited just to be here. We've got so much terraforming to do. It, it, the terraforming on this was bad enough and I, I don't really like how it turned out, but I think it'll do. It'll do because we've got much more work to do. The castle, as I said, will be over in this direction. I've got some holes to patch up. Yeah, and like right around here, we're going to have a huge castle. <laughs> this is Miranda, also known as Chateau de Noisy, the Noisy Castle. We're in the creative test world that I used to stage the short teaser video that I put up on my channel to show off the castle. I wanted to introduce the castle to you like this so you have some idea of what we will be building over in the Slow Run SMP. Because I am so incredibly stupid to think that I can build this in survival in the time I have available to me, it might take a very long time. So I wanted you to see the final product and what we will be working toward. This castle was started in 1866 and it took nearly 40 years to build. The iconic clock tower was actually built last, it was finished in 1903. This was designed to be a summer home, summer home, for a very wealthy family. And it was originally called Chateau Miranda, Castle Miranda. After World War II, it was used by the Belgian Railway Company as a holiday camp for sick children and renamed Chateau de Noisy, the Noisy Castle. But in the early 1990s, it was abandoned and began to decay over time and was eventually torn down just a few years ago.
There are two great resources for learning more about the castle, and I will link to these in the description below. One is David Baker Photography, which provides an excellent history accompanied by some amazing photographs. The other is the channel Exploring and Me, a channel dedicated to urbex, urban exploration, where the creator has several videos about his explorations of the castle in its derelict state. I first saw the castle on the Abandoned Places Twitter feed, and the pictures are hauntingly beautiful. It affected me deeply, really, as a very powerful symbolic illustration of how all things of great beauty will eventually fall victim to the ravages of time. All of us are going to face the very same fate. So I wanted to recreate this castle in its earlier days to resurrect what time had stolen from us. Minecraft is a way for me to recapture my youth, and what better way than to rebuild a beautiful castle like this? I promised my friends I wouldn't build any more medieval castles on the server, and technically this one is classified as neo-gothic. And that means pointy towers, arches, different roof lines intersecting at various angles, lots and lots of detailed ornamentation in the stone, not all of which we can easily reproduce in Minecraft. We will talk a lot more about these details while building it, but one thing I want to talk about here is scale. It is difficult to make builds look good if you use an accurate scale, where one block equals one meter. There simply isn't enough geometry in Minecraft blocks to make details look good at a realistic scale, often called player scale. My first advice as a builder, if you ever find yourself working on a build and not being happy with how it looks, the first thing you should try is increasing the scale. For example, the windows on the first floor of the castle, these are nine meters high. In real life, that would be absurd. <laughs> But there's no way to detail them if they were on a more realistic scale of just two meters. Two blocks is just not enough to work with here. The actual clock tower was about 56 meters tall. My version is 110 blocks tall, roughly twice the scale of real life. To be honest, to really do justice to the beauty of this castle, or any highly detailed Minecraft build for that matter, You'd want to crank up your render distance to 32 chunks and build with all available space you have from Y minus 64 all the way to build limit. But I wanted to build this in survival, so of course I'm going to have to make some compromises. I'm still happy with the scale we have here, but it is just barely passable. To really bring out the detail, we'd want it to be twice this height, maybe more. Now that you've seen what Castle Miranda looks like, let's head back to the slow run and get started building. Back here in the massive cherry grove next to our caretaker's cottage, we got to work building out the footprint for the castle. First, we had to add torches to the ground to avoid building a mob farm, and then we cleared out over a hundred cherry trees while collecting as many of the leaves as possible with silk touch. Finally, it was time to haul in the stone and start placing it at the ground level for the castle. And then, of course, more torches! So I can work on the castle without worrying about uninvited creepers showing up to blow up all of my building materials. And I blew through my stone budget. But we've got our platform built and all torched up, nice and bright over here. You can see our caretaker's house in the distance. Wow, this is just the footprint, of course. It looks very imposing, <laughs> very, very imposing. We will have our work cut out for us. Absolutely dwarfs the caretaker's house. And of course, uh, we still need more terraforming, but I've decided to 
hold that off until I start getting the walls in. Um, priority now, however, uh, since um, I used uh, a lot more stone than I expected over here. Need to head back to base, probably do a little more quarrying, but uh, main priority is to get our f uh, materials for the first layer. Materials for the first floor of the castle. Got the beacon set up. Been mining. Mining under the village. Wanted to check out over here the bamboo farm. So I um I I noticed a little a little something here. I didn't I didn't put this here. I suspect I mean, I know this is a uh, shulk, uh, shulker box loader, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure that Blockmeister got sick of me manually uh, pulling the bamboo out of chests and putting it into shulker boxes. So um, when I came over to the industrial district today, I, I found this. And, um, yeah, all of these shulkers are full of bamboo. It's just awesome. Thanks, Block, for uh, making things a little bit more efficient around here. Really appreciate that. We're back at the castle site right now. Just uh, on the other side of the trees from the caretaker's house, we can see in the background. I've got the materials that I think I need to get the main walls of the castle. It's actually not much variety here. Uh, for the roof and the interior and the windows, that's a different story. But for the walls, well, it's a castle, so it's mostly made of stone. Um, so what we, have, what we have mostly to work with are gray blocks. We got stone, we got more stone, we got more stone. Uh, we got some cobblestone, stone brick walls, cobble walls. That's really, really what I'm using to detail the windows or, or to show the frames of the windows. We need lots of andesite as well. Lots of andesite. Um, some polished andesite, andesite walls. Um, we've got our wool. Now the gray wool is mostly going to be used for the roof of the tower, the, the, the main spire. Um, but we'll need some uh, lower uh, in lower sections as well. Some light gray wool goes on the sides of the castle as well. Um, light gray concrete powder. Uh, your assortment of diorite there. Some smooth stone. And this is all the cobble deep slate I have left. So remember when uh, Brickster said he would get me back for uh, claiming this biome? Well. He, um, he got it back, he got me back by uh, asking for some cobble deep slate. Um, about 10 shulkers worth. So I don't have much left to work with. I'm gonna start building the, the, the roof, you know, the, the deep slate is mainly for the roof sections. So I wanna get the walls up first and then we'll have to go mining to get more deep slate. But for now, I, I just have enough to add some of the details around the side. Um, also, um, we'll be using a lot of iron. We will go through this entire shulker box of iron blocks, not as iron blocks, of course, but we'll turn them into chains and hoppers. Yes, hoppers. I build with hoppers. They, they look great. Okay, so we're going to get set up here. Um, what is the best way to do this? What I'm thinking, let's, let's, let's free cam it. <laughs> this is the site that we have to work with. All of this will be a, a giant castle eventually, but we're gonna start with one section first. Now the main central tower goes right here. That's gonna go last because it was built last. So what I'm gonna do is build the, the section uh, that goes right here. It's kind of a large apartment building looking build anyway. It doesn't really stand on its own. Well, well it could, it just doesn't have side walls. But this is the part that I designed first uh, in creative, and then and then I built the rest of the castle around it once I had 
the right scale. So I think that's an appropriate place to start. We're going to we're going to put in this section right here. It's kind of next to the main tower because it is next to the main tower, but apart from the main tower, it's kind of the most iconic um what what people associate with uh Chateau de Noisy, Castle Miranda. So that is what we will that is what we will start with and yeah, I'll I'll be back um assuming the wandering trader doesn't have anything decent for me um to 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 buy. If he's got brown dye, I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. That is one that I'm missing because I don't have a cocoa bean farm. Okay, here we go. The first wall is in. And from down here, you can really get a sense of the scale involved. Now, the window design is not quite complete. This is just the exterior, but we'll get into that. So it is a gray blob, but we're using a little bit of detailing. Um, the roof color is mainly gonna be deep slate. And I just started the outline for this section of the roof, but I haven't put it in yet because I wanted to show what the what the uh, first section of the castle would look like on its own. And also just to get a sense of the scale and where it belongs in the, in the, uh, grand, uh, the complete design of, of the castle. Of course, there will be another section over here to the left and to the right of this section. So it uh, doesn't look the best on its own there, but uh, some idea of how the texturing is going one thing I, I do want to call out here that you can kind of see the stone, the smooth stone on the edges, um, up and down the sides on, on this side and this side. Keep an eye on that because that is an architectural technique known as the Quoin or coin. And it, uh, it's basically, um, aesthetic but it provides a sense of reinforcement. So by, by drawing uh, attention to the corners of a building, you make it seem more sturdy than, than it really is. And then we're using a little bit of accents um, on, uh, with deep slate along the top there to introduce the roof line. The hoppers, they just look great as a, a horizontal line to break up the monotony of the stone. Got a whole lot of more work to do. Let's get to it. So I went ahead and started building the roof anyway. I just couldn't leave it without being able to show off uh, what the roof will start looking like. And we can get an idea here of the view. And this this is the second highest point, I think, maybe. Um, of course, the tower is the tallest, but here we're, we're capping off. We're capping off the roof of this section with uh, bottom slabs. And um, so that it's not spawnable. <laughs> very important because it's very difficult to light things up from up here. Um, let's, uh, let's wait for the sun to go down and then I can give a proper tour of the, uh, or I'll, I'll show in free cam the, um, 
the front of this build. All right, sun is out. Let's take a look. So there we have it. Again, without the windows in and without the other parts of the castle next to it. But now you can see this shape. Um, the, the real castle had uh, like a, a trapezoid shaped roof. Uh, very difficult to reproduce with um, in Minecraft uh, to make it look decent, but we've got uh, a sloping shape on the corners there that kind of gets the job done. In any case, I wanted to I wanted to show what uh, the the contrast between the the gray of the stone and the darker color of the deep slate on the roof. And of course, all of this contrasts so beautifully with the Cherry Grove biome. So glad I decided to build here. Of course, all this stone, the footprint of the remainder of the castle needs to go in. All that work still awaits. We have also um, some extra detailing at, on the top of the roof that I'll get to um, when I have the rest of the roof filled in. We've got some fireplaces, some chimneys, some exhaust pipes, uh, vents. You know, it's not a modern building, but it's not its not medieval either. This is sort of a neo-Gothic castle. It was built in, in 1866, so there were some, you know, semi-modern conveniences involved. It's a great start. I'm, I'm glad I got to show you the roof, um, and then I'll... Uh, so that I can get started on the rest of it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to take we're gonna have to take a little bit of a break. We're gonna have to uh, go back to base because of the deep slate situation. That's all that's left. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go replenish those supplies. I really love the caretaker's house. I just I really love it. I love it. It's a, it's in a great spot, and I I love it. It's going to be dwarfed by the castle, but hey. All right, I'm heading back up to the caretaker's house right now. We're going to end the day here. I will sign off upstairs at the caretaker's cottage. And and uh, tomorrow morning, first thing, time to go mining. I think I can leave all of this here. Do I have another? No, this is, this is my... You just take that with me. Let's do a little fly around to the back. All right. Oh, and I can also show you what's going on in here. Cherry leaves, cherry leaves, cherry leaves. Yeah, four, four shulkers full of cherry leaves wore down my Silk Touch Ho very substantially. And we've got lots of logs in here, too. Um, yeah, we, we've got logs. Okay. Um, and uh, plenty of saplings, yeah. Oh, and what's what's in there? Oh, yeah, the, there's the pink petals. Got lots of pink petals. Um, did I say lots of pink petals? Yes. <laughs> and from the terraforming, we got a decent amount of grass and dirt. Going to need that and probably a whole lot more. All right, that's going to do it for today. Catch you on the flip side.